Welcome back to our study in the book of Revelation. And today uh, we are looking at a special uh, lesson that I feel that fits in right here. And we need to deal with Daniel's 70 weeks. It's a prophecy out of the book of Daniel. And it fits in our study of the book of Revelation of right around chapter 5, following chapter 5. So you might want to consider this um, lesson or chapter 5 plus. And so this is an added feature. I will be having several of these throughout our entire study of the book of Revelation. So they will drop in and uh, in wherever that is appropriate. So what is this all about? Uh, maybe you've heard about it. Maybe you're a great student of it and possibly have taught a YouTube video or preached this. Um, or this could be brand new to you. Let's get into this and you'll see how it does fit into the book of Revelation because uh, in reality it deals with the seven-year tribulation uh, at the very, very end. But most of it isn't about the seven-year tribulation. So here we go. At this point of our study, it's important that we understand a prophecy from the Old Testament that is fulfilled in this great seven-year tribulation period. We need to head back and go back to the book of Daniel for this. So background, backstory, Israel has been captive for 68 years at this point in the book of Daniel, when Daniel gets ready to write this. They are in Babylon. Remember Nebuchadnezzar, 68 years, 69 years prior to this, went in back to Jerusalem and conquered it, burned the city, and took, took the people away. So Daniel is reading in Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 11 and 12, and he knows that the time of this, his nation's captivity is just about over. It's 70 years, God said. So God shares this vision with Daniel in chapter 9, verses 24, 25, 26, and 27. This is where we get Daniel's vision of the 70 weeks. So let me read those verses to you, then we'll go back and fit them in and explain. And as we read along, you'll, you'll sort of be able to figure along some of this of what it's talking about. But we'll detail it uh, actually phrase by phrase. Seventy weeks are determined upon your people and upon your holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the Most High. 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah Prince shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. 26. And after 62 weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. And 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Now that's a mouthful in that verse. So where are we and what is this talking about? And yes, I have a map graph picture for you to look at. I did not make this and I don't know and I don't know who made it, but thank you for the practicality of this. I've seen and if you Google Daniel 70 weeks and look at images, you will see some extremely, extremely detailed ones. But I try to keep things very simple. And I hope I whet your appetite to go look in depth and to dig deeper 
into Daniel's 70 weeks. This is, this is a, an upfront explanation of it, a detailed one. It goes deep, but there are greater and, and deeper studies that can be had, and you can do them. And so if you look at this, um, we begin where Daniel's prophecy is revealed with an arrow, and then we come to a point. It's talking about 69 weeks, and then there's a gap, and then there's one week. And I'm going to let you on a little secret. A, a week is seven years. So if you look at to the far end of the tribulation period, it's a seven-year tribulation. It was spoken of at the end. And so King Artaxerxes is on the throne, and he decrees to let Jews go back, and he'll fund them, and he'll protect them as they go to go back and build the walls of Jerusalem and complete the city. Previously, the temple has already been built, but it's standing there, not used in reality. And so in this, that is seven weeks involved, 49 years for that to happen. And from that point on to the show up of Messiah, Jesus Christ is 69 we or 62 weeks. And so, or rather, they add up to 69 weeks. And that leaves us the one week at the end. So now that I have everything confused, all right, so we've used up 49 years or seven weeks. And then we use up 62 weeks from the completion of Jerusalem and the walls all the way to Messiah. And that's 434 years. That's a big, long time. And then there's the church age, and then there's the seven-year tribulation. All right, let's get into this. Here's the first seven weeks. The rebuilding of Jerusalem, and I've put the arrow, the red arrow in there, and it takes us from the time that King Artaxerxes decrees and allows the Jews to go back. And we find this in Nehemiah. Let's get into the Bible verses. Here we go. Seventy weeks are determined upon your people and upon your holy city. And so that's what we're looking at is 70 weeks or there's a determination that is given now upon God's people in captivity and upon Jerusalem, the holy city. So he talks about weeks and this section of our lesson is a definition and a breakdown of the weeks and where we get this from. So the week, the word week in the Hebrew means a period of seven. That's really what it means, not a week. It can be either days or it can be years. But as, but as it reads out, and we've learned earlier in the book of Daniel, it can only be years. And so a week is a year. And we're talking about years. Um, so understand that. And literally in the Hebrew, this means 77s are determined as you read that verse. So 77s are determined upon your people and upon your holy city. So we're dealing with 490 years, totally, 70 times seven. All right, let's go another step further and feel free to stop this video and go back and re-listen or think about or do a little research. A year in the Bible was 360 days. That was the Hebrew calendar. And it really is still is today. Genesis 7 and 8 both describe a month being 30 days. And so that was already said and that was lived uh, from that point on. Also in Revelation, we have three and a half years being 1,260 days, which makes this 30-day months. So we're functioning off of God's people, the Jews. We're functioning out of their calendar. So a year is 360 days. Now verse 25, know therefore and understand that. Okay, now here's more of the prophecy that we will define and look at. So the first one, verse 24, that we looked at was the word week. Had to come out of that and understanding that these weeks have been marked off. And God and the, uh, the angel is telling Daniel what, what they are. And that from the going forth of the commandment, 
to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score sixty and two weeks. So there's seven weeks for the first part and it continues on from there once the walls are completed and the, the city is protected. Then three score or 62 weeks begin counting, the next day actually. And the street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublous times. And believe me, they had a lot of trouble to do that. So note that this decree is not to rebuild the temple. It's already built. It's already up. That's already happened. But it is to restore and to build Jerusalem. This happened when King Artaxerxes made this proclamation on what we would say is our march, but on the Jewish calendar, Nisan 14, in the year 445 before Christ. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1 bears this out. And that's a good cross-reference verse. The Jews had a terrible time getting the walls back up and constructing the city, not because of the work, you had eager people to build and to lay the, the put the walls back up and build the buildings in the town and the, put the streets back in. Ezra and Nehemiah tell this story. There was all sorts of issues. The people that were already living there put up a stink, and fought again and 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 worked behind their backs and worked with lost people, people that had moved in, other nations that had moved into the country when it was vacant. But we know that they pushed through, and in Ezra 9 and 10, we read that it was finished in 396 B.C. It took a while, but they got it done. And so to rebuild that the walls and to finish the city off, to get it functioning again, was actually 49 years in totality. So that's the first seven weeks, and it equals 49 years. And once again, you can see it with the red arrow, and that's where we are. Now we immediately, like the next day, now that's com completed, the clock is still ticking to Messiah. And that's what this next one is. The next 62 weeks is the coming of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Know therefore and understand that from, and once again in the burnt purple or orange rather, that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be 70 weeks and three score, 60 and two weeks, 62 weeks. So the restoration of the wall, seven, the coming to the Messiah shall be, 60, uh, 62 weeks, the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. If you hear strong thunder-like noises in the background, that is exactly what's going on around me as I, as I teach this lesson. And I thought about maybe I shouldn't do that, but God has all sorts of reasons for thunder. Um, the, main, uh, the main reason is to get our attention. And so maybe we need our attention as I record this. Maybe I need to pay more attention to this. So there's the, let's continue on and we'll see more pictures coming up. Verse 26, and after three score and two weeks, after 62 weeks, actually years times that, but not for himself and the people, the prince that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. I'm going to leave that alone because this is, this is more into the seven-year tribulation. It says that Messiah shall be cut off. So, jumping ahead, Jesus has ridden into Jerusalem in what we call the triumphal entry. And we call it on Palm Sunday. The people cheer as he, as he comes. They want him to be the Messiah, but the, their idea of the Messiah is someone that would overthrow the Roman Empire and reestablish Israel as God's shining light and that Jesus would set up his throne and reign out of Jerusalem. Well, Jerusalem will be at that shining light someday. Jesus will reign in Jerusalem someday, but they were they were willing to accept him only if he was if he was the political conqueror the military conqueror well he will be that too but in 
in the book of Revelation and during the tribulation at the end, he will be that, but he's not that primarily. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And so the crowds were immense and excited with anticipation that Jesus would destroy the Romans and set his kingdom up on earth. Now, five days after this have passed now, that ride, that triumphal entry, and on this day they are calling for his death. Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And this is where the words and that phrasing is that Messiah is cut off. He's walking the earth. God sends him, his only begotten son. And so he is killed and dies on a cross. Now, make no, make, make no mistake on this. Jesus gave his life. He, had, he chose to go to the cross. It wasn't that the mob, yes, the mob killed him, but it wasn't their call and the people, the people weren't in charge. The mob wasn't in charge. The Romans weren't in charge. He was in charge of his life. And so Daniel's 70 weeks now comes to a halt. We've done 69 weeks. And there's going to be a long pause that we are living in with just the one week to go. So let's do some math here. And then I'm going to let you look and move a little bit further. And we're going to see our, our, our timeline once again. So do you remember when we started way back in March 14th? In 445 B.C. at the very beginning of the first, of, of the first week. We can figure the date of Christ's triumphal entry to be April 6, 30, 32 A.D. Now, how do we do that? Okay. All right. You've got seven times, these are years, times 69. And that equals, those are the 69 weeks out of the 70. They total 800, or 483 total years. Now, the Jewish calendar has 360 days. We know that. And so if we multiply that, we get... 173,880 days. Now just, that's the math, okay? That's, that's easy to understand. Math doesn't lie here. All right, now, if we convert to our time, and where we have 365 and a quarter days, what we do is we take our 365.25 quarter days. Remember, we have a leap year every four years. We add a day. And we divide that by the 173,888. We get 476 solar years. Now we can start counting from 445 BC. We can start counting towards back towards us. But of course, we fall short of us by almost 2,000 years. But what this brings us back to is one before Christ. And now, what you have to understand, there is no zero year. There's 1 B.C., and then the next day is they begin 1 A.D. They're in that year. And so it adds up into bringing us to 32 A.D., that that's when the triumphal entry is, and it would be on April 6 that year, in 32 A.D., so think about this a minute. If Jesus went those five days extra, just add it to that, and we're on Friday and he was crucified, that's the date. Do you ever wonder why Easter sort of floats? Because many people can't nail it down, but they know it's right around here. And it's as early as late March occasionally, but most of the time it's right in this area. It's in April around April 11th. So that's Messiah is cut off. So now there is the pause. Do you see the big red arrow now? Um, there's going to be a big pause. We're in the church age, the age of grace. It's an unspecified amount of time. We have no idea how long it's going to be. But the way things are shaping up, we're looking for the return of Jesus Christ at any time. And after he returns, then the clock, the calendar starts again, 
and we have seven, 360 days more. And in this case, it is tribulation, the great tribulation. The church is never mentioned in the Old Testament. The prophets were never told about it. They could only see to Messiah and see beyond him as what the Old Testament called Jacob's troubles or the day of the, the great day of the Lord, the great day of God's judgment upon man, and the millennial reign, the thousand year reign of Jesus. All they're all in all this is in the book of Revelation, but the Jews weren't given that that view. They were not given that information. Because they were to they were to turn to the Lord. They were constantly called back to turn to God. And they kept turning turning, turning, turning far away from him. And so with the last week, once again, we are looking at the Antichrist and we're looking at the great seven-year tribulation. And so this is where this comes in. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now the he here is not capitalized. But this is someone who's come to reign, and come on, someone has come to rule and has come on a white horse. That information's not given, the white horse, in this prophecy. But as we read on, listen to what happens. To confirm, he makes a covenant with Israel for one week. We read this in the book of Revelation. Antichrist does this. And in the midst of the week, in the middle of the seven years, three and a half years in, he shall cause the sacrifice, the Jews are sacrificing at the temple, and they have the oblations, offerings to cease, but Antichrist stops them. And for the overspurting of abominations, he shall make it desolate. What he wants to do is he offers a pig upon the altar, he makes it an abomination of desolation, and he makes a mockery in God's face of God's people and the Lord God Almighty himself and proclaims himself to be the king of kings and reigns and rules and murders out of Jerusalem. And he's, he's there for three and a half years until even until the consummation or the burning up of and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The judgment of God gets poured out upon, upon the the remainder of whatever world is left. And so that is the story. Antichrist makes this covenant with Israel for seven years. And I know I'm rehearsing this again. For three and a half years, there's peace. There's still judgment going on, but with Israel, there is peace. After that time, Antichrist breaks this pact. And for the next three and a half years, it is all out war and misery that Antichrist declares upon Israel. So if you need to do the math again with me, let's do it one more time and make it sort of easy. There's three divisions of time. I'm just teaching it a different way here that make up the 70 years. We have seven weeks or 49 years, and that's the decree of Artaxerxes until the time that Ezra and Nehemiah finish off and they rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And we have the date of that decree based upon Nehemiah chapter 2. The next day, it begins the 62 weeks or 434 years. This time runs from the rebuilding of the city walls of Jerusalem to the crucifixion of Christ. He's cut off. And then there's, this, there's just the dead time, the time that's the church, the church age is not even mentioned. The clock doesn't tick. Because this is all about God's people, the Jews, about Israel. And we're the church. We have been grafted in. And so there's one week left, and that's seven years. But that's the prince. Small letters, small p. He's the Antichrist. And this is the time slot of the great seven-year tribulation. The Jewish calendar has 360 days. Between 69 and 70 weeks, there's that undetermined period. Converting to our calendar, I've shared this with you. Just go down and look at the math once again that you can see how we multiply this out. We divide and we come up with 
476 solar years on our calendar, and we determined that the cutting off of Messiah is in 32 AD. So the wrap up is the removal and the restoration. What I didn't read to you or make any comment to you about is are there, there are six things here. Remember the six is the number of man. Seventy weeks are determined upon your people and upon your holy city. Okay, now the reason for this prophecy and this determination and for to get God's people's attention is this, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the Most High. This is all about, this, this prophecy is, a, is getting everybody to Christ, Jesus Messiah, the Christ walking the earth. It was, it was to get them this far, and for these reasons, this was the end game. And here you have many verses throughout the rest of Scripture, here and there in the Old Testament, that bring up these things. The first, the first three of them are to, are to end things, to finish the transgression to make an end to sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to pay for sin, to make an end for sin, to finish the transgression, to bring an end to ungodliness. Christ would die on the cross. He would come and he would do that for his people Israel. The good part of this is to bring everlasting righteousness then, to seal up and to bring the visions and prophecies to a conclusion, to fulfill them. That's how you seal them up and finish them off as they get fulfilled. And most importantly, the very last one, to anoint the most holy, the most high, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Well, I appreciate your attention and hanging in here with me, if you did. I encourage you, maybe before you listen to the next lesson and we get into chapter 6, because we're going to be doing 6 and then doing one on only just the Antichrist, if you, if you worry about this at all and don't quite grasp it, go back and just look at the, find the, the graphs and the maps and the recap. Just look at that sheet maybe and freeze frame the video and just look it through and talk yourself through it. Teach it like I do, and uh, verbalize it. Just say it out loud. You'll learn it a whole lot quicker. If I can be of any help to you, though, uh, the, this is my, uh, these are my people, and I thank God for them that have helped in the putting together of most of the study of Revelation. But this is where you can find me, and I'd be glad to answer any questions if you email me. Um, I won't keep your email address. I don't publish it. You're not on YouTube. It's just we'd have a discussion or you might have a comment, and I'll thank you for it. Father, we thank you so much that even back in the Old Testament, you told us about Messiah. And in your word, you tell us about him again, not just what he has done for us, not what he's doing now, but also what he's going to be doing. And we have, we have it laid out. We're just waiting for the return of our Lord. Help us to be faithful as your people and a righteous people and to be ready for the Lord's return. In his wonderful name I pray, amen.